Good afternoon. The Secretary General will update you on the second day uh, of the meeting of NATO Foreign Ministers, and then we'll have time for a few questions. Secretary General. Good afternoon. Uh, we have just finished a substantive uh, meeting of NATO Foreign Ministers to prepare for the Vilnius Summit in uh, July. We welcomed Finland uh, as uh, our newest member, and uh, Minister Havisto took up Finland's uh, seat among uh, NATO allies. Allies also agree that Sweden should become an ally as quickly as possible. We addressed uh, many important topics over the past two years, including how to strengthen our political and practical support for Ukraine. We met yesterday in the NATO Ukraine Commission with Foreign Minister Koleba. We agree that uh, our continued military support for Ukraine is essential. I welcome the new commitments made by allies and I expect more. <clears throat> we also addressed our longer-term support. Uh, we do not uh, know when uh, this war will end, but when it does, uh, we must ensure that President uh, Putin cannot continue to chip away at uh, European security. So we must enable Ukraine to deter and defend against future aggression. This includes strengthening Ukraine's armed forces and arrangements for Ukraine's security. We agreed uh, to start work uh, on developing a strategic multi-year assistance program for Ukraine, a clear demonstration that our support will continue for a long haul. To increase Ukraine's interoperability with NATO and to bring it up to NATO standards. This will assist Ukraine on its path to Euro-Atlantic integration, because Ukraine's future is in the Euro-Atlantic family. NATO allies are committed to giving Ukraine what it needs to prevail as a sovereign independent nation in Europe and to achieve a just and durable peace. At the same time, we will continue to support our partners facing pressure from Russia, including Moldova, Georgia and Bosnia-Herzegovina. We also discussed the threats and challenges, challenges in the Middle East and North Africa, including instability, terrorism and the growing activities of Russia and China. We will continue to work closely with our partners, including Mauritania and Tunisia, to help them build up their defence institutions and stabilise their countries. To keep our people safe in a more dangerous world, it is essential that we invest more in our defence. So today, ministers also addressed progress on defence spending. At the Vilnius summit, I expect allies to agree an ambitious a new defence investment pledge with 2% of GDP as a floor, not the ceiling. For our final session, NATO's Asia-Pacific partners, Australia, Japan, New Zealand and the Republic of Korea, joined us, together with the European Union. We discussed the global consequences of Russia's war against Ukraine. This war is not only an attack on Ukraine, but on the international rules-based order that preserves peace and stability. If President Putin wins in Ukraine, it will send a dangerous message to authoritarian leaders around the world that they can achieve their goals through brute force. So our support to Ukraine remains critical and it is in our shared security interest. We also discussed China's growing alignment with Russia. China refuses to condemn Russia's aggression, it echoes Russian propaganda, and it props up Russia's economy. China and Russia are also stepping up their joint military activities in the Indo-Pacific region. Allies have been clear that any provision of lethal uh, aid by China to Russia would be a historic mistake with profound implications. At a time when Beijing and Moscow are pushing back against the rules-based international order, it is even more important that we continue to stand together as NATO allies and with like-minded partners. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions.